Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 11 of my Python for Finance video tutorial. Today, I come bearing gifts. I have been asked, I don't know how many times, how to download stocks in specific countries. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I created CSV files for 15 of the biggest stock exchanges in the world. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to download all of them. And on top of that, I'm going to show you this really awesome library I found for Yahoo Finance that's going to allow you to dig up every piece of financial data you can ever imagine about each one of these securities. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so what I did was I got you all of the tickers for the top 15 exchanges in the world. And it's very important that all the data be set up exactly the same way. Everything's on GitHub, of course, for free and just make sure ticker company don't change absolutely anything this is for australia and everything else is basically the same for all the other tickers then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download some new libraries the main one we're going to be downloading is yahoo finance this thing is awesome and i'm going to show you how to set it up right now so you're just going to go to Anaconda Navigator, and this is the same on Windows as well as on Mac. I already did this on Windows, so I know it 100% works. Now on Windows, it's going to be slightly different. I usually use the PowerShell prompt, but you could use the Qt console as well. And here we can just go launch, and we just need to install a couple different libraries here. So you're going to type in conda install-c conda forge multitasking. And this is in the GitHub file as well. So you can go and just copy and paste it if you want to make sure you get it perfect. And it's just going to take a couple minutes to install this. And you can see it's ready to go. And it says you may need to restart the kernel to use the updated packages. And we're going to need to install another library. And once again, here is our other library. This is the specific Yahoo Finance library. So I'll just run that. And I see I have an error here. LXML is also going to be required. Now to solve that LXML problem, let's just go pip install LXML like this. And it's saying that it's already set up, but what we specifically are looking for is 4.5.1. So let's just go equal to 4.5.1. And there we did. We went and forced the installation. Now let's try Yahoo Finance again, and it looks like everything's working, and everything is satisfied and installed, so awesome. Like I said, that's kind of a Mac-only problem right there. We can close the console, and now we should be able to come in here and go and import those libraries. So just go import Y Finance as YF. And let's run that, and we didn't get any errors. That means it found the library, and we're ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to show you some of the really cool things we can do with this Yahoo Finance library. I'm going to create a function here, and I'm going to call this get info on stock, and you're going to be able to pass a ticker to it. So there's our ticker, and we're going to be able to get loads of data. What you have to do first is go stock, and yf dot ticker and pass in the ticker passed inside of here. Now you're going to be able to get an overview of nearly any stock in the entire world. So we got stock information and we can come down here and we can just call this. So it's going to go get info on stock. And just to prove to you that it works with numerous different stocks, I'm going to use just a random stock from Australia. Okay, so here is a random Australian stock and you can see here is loads of data on that random stock. Okay, but it doesn't stop there. We can get even more information. So let's just go. That's a little bit overwhelming. So maybe we want to not, you know, deal with that. But I would say that I want to just get historical closing price data. Well, I'm going to go History is equal to, and stock. This is what we'll be using a lot in this tutorial. History, and I'm going to say period is going to be all the data, which is going to be max. And what I'm specifically interested in 
is the closing data. If you don't put the closing data here, it's going to give you a lot more information. So what I can do now is I can go history like this. So history and head like that and run it. And this other stuff's going to go away. So let's just get this. And you can see here it is giving from the very first day of trading for this random Australian stock. It is giving our price information. All right, so what else can we do? Well, we can also come in here and we can get financial data. So we can just go stock. Let's just get rid of this right here. So we can say stock and financials. So financials like this. And we can run this again. And you'll see that we're going to get loads of financial data on said stock also. What else can we get? Well, we can also get major shareholder data. So we just go stock and change this to major holders. So there that is. And maybe we want to use like a different stock. So let's use Microsoft. Okay, so there's Microsoft and we can do like this and Microsoft. And we'll see the largest holders of those the, or percentage that is actually being held. I misspoke there. This is going to show you the percentage that is held by insiders as well as institutions and so forth. Now, if we want to get the actual institutional holders names, we can come in and we can do that. So we just change this to institutional. So institutional holders and run that and run this again and you're going to see probably vanguard yes vanguard's almost always the top one and all of the other major holders of said assets and what else can we get well we can also get balance sheet information so we can go balance sheet like that and run that on microsoft and we'll get all of that and i'll show you a couple more so there you are there's some more data Let's say we wanted to get some cash flow. So cash flow on Microsoft. And there we go, it's gonna pop up. And there's all that information. We can also go and get earnings data. So earnings and run that. And there we go, more data. And then finally, we can get some uh, analyst recommendations. So are analysts recommending that we should buy this stock or not. So just type in recommendations and it'll give you a list of different people and whether they recommend buying Microsoft stock or not. And you can see that of course, because it is Microsoft, there is tons of information. All right, so there you go. Just with that one little library, you can get all of that stock information. So what we want to do now, however, is we want to start downloading stock data for every stock in the world. That's what we're really aiming for. So what we're going to do is, I did this in a previous video, but I'll cover it again. So sometimes whenever you're making these massive pools of information from Yahoo, some of the information might not get to you. So we're going to store that in a list called stocks not downloaded. And then we are also going to have another list and it is going to be missing stocks. So what I normally do is I batch download, let's say like a thousand securities or 500 securities at a time. They're going to get thrown in stocks not downloaded. And then I'm going to add them into the missing stocks list. And then I'm going to update this cell. Okay, and then the next time through, we're going to have a new batch of stocks that weren't downloaded. We're going to put those into missing stocks and continue onwards from there. And then we can rerun a uh, pulling that data just on the missing stocks for said index. All right, this is a function that I used before to return stock data frame from CSV files. We're actually not going to be using that in this video, but it does allow us to pull that data from the CSV files, which is how we're going to be saving that data. This also allows us to get column information from CSV. So if you wanted closing prices, you can do that. All right. But what we want to do now is we want to get the stock tickers that are in the CSV files, which I provide on GitHub. So how do we do that? It's actually pretty simple. I'm going to create a, this is actually going to be a list. I'm going to call this tickers and I'm going to call get column from CSV 
and that is get column from CSV. Covered this in a previous video. And what we're going to do inside of here is we are going to just pass in the location for the CSV file that has all the tickers for the Australian Stock Exchange. And this is going to be a little bit different for Windows versus Mac. So for Windows, you're going to do something like this, of course, and for Macintosh, however, it's kind of going to be a little bit longer. And I'm just going to put this as path and then throw path inside of there. And what we're specifically looking for is all of the information in the ticker column for our, our stocks. And if you got, forgot what that looks like, that's this. See? Ticker. This is where that's coming from. And we're going to download all of these tickers that are in this Excel file. All right, so after we have all that done, and of course your path's going to be completely different to mine, I'm going to say tickers like this. And you can see here is a list of all those tickers. All right, so now what we're going to be able to do is go and use that information to pull all of the data from Yahoo. So this is going to be a function that's going to save that stock data to a CSV file. So I'm going to say define save to CSV from Yahoo and we're going to pass in a folder where we're going to be storing all of this information and then a ticker. Okay, so there we got that all set up. Then I'm going to have, just like I showed you before, we're going to say stock and we're going to use our Yahoo Finance library ticker and we will pass in the individual ticker that we have there and we're going to be reading data so there's going to be a potential for problems and what I like to do is just come in here and put some information in regards to what data is being pulled just so as a user you are getting an alert message so that you know something's going on if you don't do this you're going to be like is it working and it says it's working but is it then what we're going to do is we're going to get our historical closing price data so stock, just like we did previously, history and period is equal to max like that. And we're specifically interested in only the closing price data. Another thing I like to do is put a little sleep pause inside here for two seconds. That seems to improve our ability to download from Yahoo. If you try to get everything all at one time without a sleep inside of there. Yes, it's going to take a little bit longer. However, it is uh, more than likely going to work. So then we're going to say stocks not. And what this is going to do is it's going to append to our stocks not downloaded list if the data frame that it, it has here is empty. So I'll say stocks, whoops, not downloaded, downloaded and append to that list so then you're going to get a list of the stocks that you did not get all right then what i want to do is i'm going to have the file and i'm going to create the file that is going to store the information now inside of our files we don't we're not allowed to have uh, extra periods before the extension comes because it causes confusion so what i'm going to do is I'm going to say folder and ticker and replace and I'm going to replace all instances of those periods with an underscore instead and then at the end of it I'm going to put my CSV file so it's going to store this information in this file then it's going to use our folder and all of that other information to be able to properly store this information in a brand new file that it creates. And I could do something like the file and saved just to put an alert message on the screen so that you can once again see that something is working. Then what we do is go data frame, whoops, to CSV. And I covered data frames in previous videos if you want to know more about them. So we're going to just save that data we downloaded to a CSV file. And if there is a problem here, so we'll say exception as EX, and EX is going to have the message that tells us more about what error occurred. Well, I'm gonna say stocks not downloaded 
and again we're going to append whatever the ticker is to that and uh, let's also say print just to put another alert message here couldn't get data for and whatever the specific ticker is here so I'll just throw the ticker inside of there and again that's just another alert message now to test all of this what I'd like to do is just pull five years of data so, uh, for let's say well let's just pull you know just the first 20 stocks okay so what I need to do first is I need to define the location for where I want to store this information so here is the location where the folder where I want to store all of my Australian stock data so just throw that right there and then I'm just gonna say 4x in range and let's get like the first 20 stocks just to check that this actually works and then I just say save to CSV let's just copy this save to CSV and I'll copy the whole thing and paste that right there save to CSV and folder and we're going to have the tickers remember it's tickers and we specifically want to get those out individually so that is these guys right here and we're going to cycle through and grab each individual ticker and save it to our new csv file with the data we got from yahoo and then i'm going to say print and finished and run it and you can see it's saying getting data for and you can see that it saved that data and there all of it is and we're getting our first 20 and if we go and open up our Australian folder where we have all that data, you can see it's downloading it automatically right there. And if we go and open it up inside of Excel, I mean, actually opened it up in numbers, but whatever, you can see that we have all that closing price data. And you can do this for every other. I have the top 15 exchanges with all the tickers and everything is going to work in precisely the same way. So hopefully you guys find this useful. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.